So just to get us started, uh, I want to introduce Patty Green. So Patty and I worked together on this resource for women entrepreneurs that is currently on the Small Business Association website. So if you literally Google the word Ascent and Small Business Administration, excuse me, not Small Business Association, but Small Business Administration, you'll find this tool and part of the learning paths, uh, which are like the different modules have been launched at this point and there's more to come. So let me tell you a little bit um, about Patty. And I really encourage you all to Google Patty and look at some of her work. She was the 18th director of the Women's Bureau at the Department of Labor. She also is a professor emerita uh, from Babson and one of the founders of the Diana Project, which is really well known in the women's entrepreneurship field for being pretty much the preeminent group of researchers. She has been an entrepreneur herself. Um, she's been an academic advisor and leader on many projects, including 10,000 small businesses with Goldman Sachs. And uh, she currently now is in California, having gone there from Texas. And she's generally all around one of just my favorite people. Um, it's really fun to have the band back together here and <laughs> talk about this tool that is free and available to women all over the world who want to know a little bit more about entrepreneurship and may want to uh, go through some exercises and, and pick out something that's relevant to their business and, and give a little more thought to that in research. Um, so Patty, one of the things that I wanted to kick us off with um, before we get into why is Ascent important and why is Ascent needed is maybe a fun fact, what is you know, a favorite piece of research having to do with women's entrepreneurship that we could share with the listeners today, those on Facebook that are streaming, those who are gonna watch this afterwards and those that are here now. And feel free guys to, to put questions in the Q&A or the chat. I'll be checking the Q&A um, as, as you think of them as we're talking. So Patty, what do you have a favorite fact or something unique that's one of the most interesting facts about women entrepreneurs? in your mind? Well, you know, it's really interesting you ask that too, because my fun fact, it's always what I just finished is my favorite thing. And uh. <laughs> Candy Brush and I just finished a book chapter yesterday that is on policy. Um, and we actually went back and looked at the last 10 years of policy in the United States that if you go to, to the Congress site and Google women and entrepreneur, you don't get much. So we went through everything and wrote out what there actually is so that we can think about what there needs to be and why. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to leave my fun fact as a teaser saying, yeah. you know, watch, for, watch for more work coming out on policy because my time in DC really changed my mind about what needs to be done and how. So I think that's, that's where I'm going to leave that one. Yeah, that's really interesting. And isn't that just a good starting place for everybody thinking, what is happening with women entrepreneurs? What policies are there for women entrepreneurs? And you're saying just to go to the Congress site and Google women entrepreneurs and see what's there and start yeah. to get to it's, know. It's one idea or, you know, read our chapter when it comes out. That'll <laughs> yeah. Okay, but you'll yeah, have to let us know. Isn't, there isn't much, you know, because I, I think policymakers really struggle to figure out what they, there's what they can do mm -hmm. and what they'd like to do. Mm -hmm. So I think that's, you know, that leaves a bit of a challenge. Right. It sounds like it because yeah. there's that gap and how to and how to fill the gap so we can sort of watch them in action. Exactly. Fill that exactly. gap. Yeah. And it's a way to get involved and get interested. And there's organizations um, like She Should Run and Plin. If any young women out there um, and even not so young women are interested in running for office, check this out. It is something that really grooms uh, young women to run for office. Yeah. And why not? You know, asking that question, why not me? Yeah. You know, and if I did have a fun fact, it was that in the United States, women own at least 50% of 45% of all the companies in the country. You know, so it's not a minority occurrence very much. It, it really is a major phenomena mm -hmm. and we need to treat it as such. Right. And so stepping, that's one of the things we'll talk about in class sometimes is not just knowing the facts, but knowing how much 
economic power is there. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. That women create. So that's probably absolutely. one of my fun facts, which is oh, I'm sorry, I, did I take your fun fact? No. <laughs> I, I, I think this, we have, there's so many fun facts, right? Yeah. And, but um, one of the things I wanted to mention, and it links to this conversation that we're having, is the idea of the economic power that women create, mm -hmm. whether it's at the community level and being in charge, essentially, and holding the purse strings for the majority of household purchasing decisions. Mm -hmm. And then at the company level, there's research study after research study showing that when you promote women into executive leadership positions, that company is more profitable, right? And then at the country level, the Global Entrepreneurship Monitor showed us that countries investing in women entrepreneurs are actually increasing their GDP. Mm -hmm. And they're just countless studies, women on boards, women. So I think that the important thing to know, like Patty is saying is, uh, be aware of the influence. This is a major source of power, economic power, political power, and just in terms of numbers, and not to sideline it and say, hey, this is just a, a minority group here. It's not. And we don't want to miss that meeting. All right, so next question, Patty. <clears throat> So we, let me just see if I can share my screen here real quickly and show the Ascent platform. Let me move over my, this is my constant struggle during class is moving all the windows over to the right yeah. place. Well, and while you're doing it, Kathy, I wanna echo how much fun it was to work with you in building this. We really did have a good time, a lot of work. A yeah. lot of work, but we really had a good time doing it. It was great. And we spent a lot of hours in your office at the Department of Labor yeah. <laughs> and just having so much fun. And you let me into your Diet Coke stash. So thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Everybody knows my secret. Yeah. yeah. All right. So here's the Ascent site. <clears throat> and basically there's a bunch of journeys and here are the ones that have been listed so far. Now, disaster and economic recovery is a huge part of what SBA does. And they actually put this together uh, in the wake of COVID-19. Patty and I were not involved with putting this together, but there's some great resources here mm -hmm. that we've all been hearing about in the news, but they're putting it in one place to make it easy to access. And then these are the, the journeys uh, that Patty and I worked on and you can click on them and see a variety of different subparts. So we're going to be discussing some of these and there's little videos and a few of them. Here's one of my favorite videos called KPIs are your BFO. Okay. And we'll, we'll be discussing these a little bit. I'm just showing you an overview. You don't have to remember all this or take it in just yet. So Patty, one of the things that we built the learning modules around mm -hmm. is key concepts and almost a checklist mm -hmm. that you had developed with the Diana project. And it really helped me understand why something like this resource needed to be built. Mm -hmm. So can you share a little bit about that? What, what's behind Ascent and, and why is it needed? Yeah. How, how do we develop it? There's a couple of things behind Ascent, but you're absolutely right, Kathy. We, we started from a really good foundation it is based on research. Um, when we built the 10,000 small businesses, we actually came up with the phrase that it was uh, invisible theory, practically actionable immediately. Because the entrepreneurs don't necessarily want to hear all about the theory, but the fact of the matter is theory explains how the world works, you know, or tries to predict how the world works. So it's built on a lot of research, probably by some of the people, I don't know who's all on the call, but I wouldn't be surprised if some of the people are on the call. It's built also on entrepreneurial self-efficacy, and mm -hmm. that's that's what you're, the self-assessment you're you're working on. That's something that um, Chao Chen and I wrote on many years ago, but then have um, finessed and finite, you know, just improved over the years. We used a basis of again for ten thousand small businesses and ten thousand women. We're using it right now with um, FMO, the Dutch Economic Development Bank, and we used it for this the basic list of skills, capabilities. What does a woman actually need to be able to do in order to grow her business? 
And that is based on research by Diana, by, by you know, hot mamas, by a lots and lots of folks. You know, it gets down to what's actually different. You know, why do we need this, this separate platform? What's done differently? So that's where we started from along with the idea that we had a definition of entrepreneurship that we were using. And it's very Babson-esque. It's uh, the ability to identify opportunities, organize resources, and provide the leadership to create something of value. And I think that's where you and I had a good time too, is playing with, it's not just economic value, it's social value. It is value for the individual, the family, the community, the society, all of those things. Mm -hmm. So we had a, a very strong basis upon which to start. Mm -hmm. And then the mandate from the government to work across agencies, I will say the team was a very bipartisan development team. Um, just let's use the best that we can absolutely find and develop new stuff where we need it. And that was the basis of Ascent. Yeah. And one of the, I, I like what you're saying, Patty, because it's the concept of self-efficacy is something that we talk a lot about in class. And it's mm -hmm. the idea of setting goals and attaining goals. It's a really specific and actionable type of self-confidence. Mm -hmm. And all of the areas that Ascent is developed around help increase self-efficacy that you can walk away and mm -hmm. say, I've learned a little bit more about this. And I know it's an important tool in my toolbox towards not just building my business or becoming more knowledgeable about, you know, taking on different opportunities within right. my business, right. but, but also building my self-efficacy. Yeah. There's one other thing I, I'd add to Kathy about the way yeah. we build it is that it's not a class. It, you don't start at the beginning and go through. Yeah. The whole idea was, what do I need to know right now? You know, and you and I right. joke many times, although it's not a joke, it's okay. Um, I'm an entrepreneur, but I'm also a spouse and a, and a, a parent. I just got the kids down. The, the house is finally cleaned up. I've got an appointment with the bank tomorrow. I want to review. How do I talk about my income statement? How do I pitch? How do I negotiate? You can go onto this site whenever, and they're very short, short bites of information and practice and yeah. get ready at your time. Yeah, I, it's so true um, because you're not going through things necessarily in order. Mm -hmm. uh, you could go down to one of, you know, a hundred sub modules and say, this is most relevant to me right now. I remember my dream for this was sort of that uh, a business book club of sorts might get together and go through it together, or if there's even a small a, a small business development center or a women's business center in different areas that they would teach this. So there's a lot of possibilities. Educators could use this, entrepreneurs Absolutely. could use this. You know. Anybody. And, and not just in the US. I mean, while we build a US faced, um, you know, this is available for anybody. To, right. To use. It really is a, a free resource. And it's pretty obvious where there's differences, for instance, where we're talking about your team and different laws, um, mm -hmm. folks will know, hey, that mm -hmm. doesn't exactly apply to my country and where I'm doing business, but is there uh, a similar or parallel law? And mm -hmm. it can, yeah, it can still be helpful. Or should there be? Or should there not be? I know. You know That's so right. I knew you would say that. <laughs> yeah. So maybe before we get into our favorite um, journeys, and learning paths. One of the things we can do is start to answer a couple questions. Um, Bonnie's asking if this is gonna be recorded to watch in the future and Sky's answering her, so thanks for that. Then we have Rebecca, um, who is a student. She's a senior at the GW School of Business. And she says, since the beginning of the pandemic, I have been helping my parents with the family restaurant. I've been able to apply some knowledge I have learned from my classes However, rarely, rarely do we learn about how to help a business recover economically. This is a really great point, right? Mm -hmm. um, do you have any advice or resources I can utilize to better help my family business? Mm -hmm. So a couple things, um, Rebecca, that I'll just share on the screen here real, real quick is I, I thought about a couple things as I was reading this. One is when you go to the disaster and economic recovery section here. And you're looking at recovery strategies. This specifically is a summary of different tools that are available and can be very helpful. So ranging from uh, SBA economic injury disaster loan, now a lot of entrepreneurs know the term EIDL 
SBA has always done this. It's just that uh, now it has a much wider reach. This is a little more about the CARES Act. If you've heard about the PPP, here it is here. And then talking about how to deal with your team and unemployment insurance. So this is a great first place to stop because uh, it can be a little bit confusing and overwhelming to read and hear all this stuff on the news and not exactly know what to do. Mm -hmm. um, the second thing I was thinking about was with regard to access to capital. And here's something about banking relationships, which can be helpful um, when you click on it. It's actually like a worksheet that you can sort of go through and figure out about, do we need to be developing new banking relationships and how to do that? as well as some things um, that your family business may be thinking about in terms of whether a line of credit, um, whether you're gonna get into something new at this time, whether there's some new opportunities in addition to recovery, to thinking about uh, debt and specifically loan underwriting. Not that you wanna put your family's business in debt, um, but Rebecca had privately uh, emailed me something earlier about an opportunity her family business may have that might uh, have to do with raising some money. So there's recovery and there's expansion possibilities. That's a lot to take on at once. So these are two things that I thought could be good places to start. And if there's any other questions, feel free to chat in. Patty, do you have anything else to add to that? You think that might be helpful? Um only use the idea of peer learning because I think the SBA disaster program is, is one of the best around. It's, it's absolutely excellent. At the same time, we always focus on peer learning. So make sure you're talking to the other restaurants, um, even your competition, uh, to the community. So there's a community approach and how do you all learn from each other? Who's got a, a, another great idea? Yeah, that's a great idea. And in here also, I'll share this real quickly. There is a journey in marketing and it's on competition. And some people, they kind of generally know, I've noticed entrepreneurs will generally know about their competition and have some ideas, but it might be time to do some more serious competition now, um, especially if you want to go to um, somebody who's offering an opportunity and say, hey, this is what else is happening in the market and strengthen your position that way. Negotiation is actually a tool that is gonna be launched uh, in the future, but this is sort of the planning and background part of it. All right, so Patty, the next question I have here is for us to share uh, a couple favorite parts of Ascent and why. So what's one of your favorite parts? One of my favorite parts that's already up, because I, I know we're gonna talk about our favorite parts that, that aren't, uh, and my favorite yeah. is favorite isn't up yet. But um, one that is up, and I think that's a little bit different, is how to be an angel. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we've been talking and doing research for decades, literally, on struggling with access to equity capital. And at the last Diana International Impact Conference, what we did was we gathered up people that were working in different ways. You know, if instead of the old trite, fix the women, let's change the system and build a system that works better for us. So in this case, um, you know, our, our, on the Ascent platform, we talk about, have you thought about being an angel? What would it mean to you? What would you have to do? You know, how might you approach that? And, and that is something that, that I've been working on quite a bit. Um, that particular se section starts with a quote from Trish Costello that some of you may know too. She's the founder of Portfolia, which is a, um, a network of funds focused on women funding the businesses they want to see in the world. So I, I think that's, that's definitely one of my favorite. Think a little bit differently about how can we fund each other as well as our own businesses. Isn't that fascinating? I love that concept. And you are a huge advocate for that. I'm gonna share the, yeah. the, and it really, it, it takes that, right? It takes somebody saying, hey, this is something we should be doing, check it out. And so under access to capital, let's see. Is the angel part up yet? Let's it's look. It's at the end of that, end of access to capital. Okay, great. Angel investing. Yeah. Okay. And this is, it's, it's just like, do I want to run for office? And this isn't something I necessarily thought I would do. Um, angel investing. This is what Patty is encouraging us to do. 
this is a call to action. Take a look at it. Yeah, I mean, there, there are limits. You have to be a, an accredited investor and those kinds yeah. of things. But that's yeah. what this walks you through saying, am I ready to be an angel? And, and in full disclosure, because I talk about it so much, I am an investor in portfolio. And I think five of the funds, just because I really believe in, you know, changing the system and making it better so that we do have you know, not just better businesses, but investing right. in, better, in the technologies we want to see in the world. Right. And so in addition to being an angel, Patty, and encouraging women to think about that, there's also the flip side of that, which is you may be looking over this and realizing there's women angels out there. Yeah. Um, there's women in the investing community. And one of the things that was a runner up from my, my fun fact and my favorite fact is some information and research about uh, women owned businesses that have female investors have more successful exits, mm -hmm. right? So the exit is a fancy word for how am I going to get out of my business? Is somebody going to buy my business? Am I going to go public? Am I going to merge? It's stuff like that. So yeah, that's, that's I thought that was value. cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think we forget to talk about, I build all this value. How do I capture it at the end? And sometimes people, especially women don't like talking about exit strategies. But if not, how do you capture all that value that you have created instead of just closing the door and walking away? Mm -hmm. And we do have a module that's going to be launching uh, on Ascent, which deals more specifically with that sort of growth and different mm -hmm. ways to exit. Mm -hmm. All right. So you like the angel investing. I would say one of the things I like is the marketing plan video. Yeah. And this concept of conversion. So it makes it very simple. There's a lot of entrepreneurs out there who, who have a sense of what works, right? Here's how I reach people. Here's how I sell. But not all entrepreneurs have sat around and thought about what is my conversion rate. And that's one way to just become more efficient and think about a way to grow your business, be more targeted and say like my conversion rate for, let's call it um, families with kids in schools is much lower than my conversion rate for millennials that mm -hmm. are living in urban areas. And start to, starting to look at that can be an interesting, uh, interesting in, and informing uh, way to dedicate your effort instead of spreading yourself really thin. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so let me see if I can share, I'm going to share sound. You can tell me if you guys don't hear this, Patty, I'm going to go to, I'm going to play the video. Good. Okay. So this is under marketing and marketing plan. And here is the video. So just Patty, give me a thumbs up if you can hear this when it starts playing. Okay. No matter the size, every company needs a marketing plan. You may already be familiar with these five main sections. Snapshot, a picture of how your product or service provides better value than the rest. Target audience, a profile of your customers using demographics and other lifestyle characteristics. Marketing goals, often directly related to your desired sales growth. Strategies and tactics, to outline how you'll reach your customers to accomplish those goals. And finally, your plan will contain a budget and related measurements. Let's make this more concrete by looking at an example. After seeing the popularity of electric scooters in California, a pair of entrepreneurs were inspired to bring the concept to other cities across the U.S. They developed a model unlike any other on the market, equipped with enough battery power for a 40-mile ride. The scooter was designed for students and young professionals who want more freedom to get around in an urban area. Their marketing goal? To sign up 2 million riders in the next five years and generate half a billion in revenue. Ambitious goals need some impressive tactics geared toward converting potential customers into riders. This is what's known as a sales or marketing funnel. The funnel begins with creating broad awareness of the scooter through press, a website, social media, or maybe an event. As people express interest at events, 
they are asked to provide their contact info and encouraged to test ride a scooter. Not everyone who enters the funnel makes it out. 50% of test riders decide to sign up, while others may spend months just thinking about it. Metrics show how well a strategy is working. One important metric is customer acquisition cost. If a $250 public event results in 50 signups, then the customer acquisition cost is about $5 per signup. As you develop a marketing plan for your product or service, you'll need to find the right mix of tactics within your budget to reach your goals. Okay, so I guess we were saying cost of acquisition and not conversion rate, but it's, it's somewhat similar. Um, there is a conversion rate that happens with a funnel and I can show you guys that in a second, but that's one of my favorite areas because one of the things that Patty and I and the whole team discussed when developing these resources is that the American Time Use study shows us that women have about half an hour less of leisure time per day. And so shocked, this- Shocked to hear it. it I, so this, outside of cloning ourselves, right? What are we going to do? And so um, how we spend our time and being really strategic about where we spend it is important. So if we know that one type of customer can be more successful and profitable for us than another type of customer, that's really important for us to know as women entrepreneurs, to be really efficient with our time. Yeah. You know, Kathy, you said two things in there that I think are really, I'd love to call out even a little bit more. Okay. When we did, when we did the financial one, we talked about being um, speaking the language of finance and what a difference it makes when you can talk to anybody in the language of finance about your business and you start talking knowledgeably about your customer acquisition cost, you've just ratcheted yourself way up there. I think it not, not legitimacy, but um, you know, ju it's just in showing that you really know your business and mm -hmm. can address it. The other one, you said something in the beginning about fit, um, sitting and thinking. I think that's one of the hardest things when we're teaching to get entrepreneurs, practicing entrepreneurs to do is actually sit and think, you know, and take the time. And, you know, we always try and convince people that sitting and thinking is doing something, but hopefully a set gives them that time to sit and think through, you know, what did that video just mean? What do I need to do differently? And then they can dive back into a set and see actually how to do it. Right. And even just to try something and even mm -hmm. develop your own version of it. Mm -hmm. But oh, and absolutely. But we're, I, Patty's saying this in a very nice way, but we know all the spazzy entrepreneurs out there, right? It's what makes us go. It helps us be effective. But do, sometimes, do, do, it's, do, um, yeah. Yeah, sometimes yeah. it's time to dial back the yayas <laughs> and sit and, and think about here is a new strategy, a new tool, even if it's just one that I'm going to try in my business. And as Patty said, it can really cast you in a positive light when let's say for you know Rebecca's uh, family business and they yeah. wanna go talk to a banker and you've got those numbers yeah. um, or you wanna have a partnership and you are looking into a partner company, maybe they're gonna help you sell a product or service and they have a very wide uh, distribution capacity in terms of reach. That you wanna have those numbers, you wanna present yourself well, even if it's just a handful. Mm -hmm. And Patty, you know, one thing I just wanted to touch on there um, is, you had mentioned when we're when we were working on this that there is research about partnerships and working together with others and success versus mm -hmm. going it alone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so I just I wondered if you could touch on that a little bit. Sure. I mean, the research does show that if you start with a partner, the the likelihood of success, you know, and in this case, it is defined as financial success, goes up. You know, in a lot of ways, that's common sense in that if you start with a partner, you have not only your resources, your bundle of resources, but theirs as well, and to see how to put those together. Now, yeah. at the time, there was also research that women were less likely to start with someone else. Uh, I think there's new research coming out that challenges that. I'm not, I'm not as comfortable su suggesting that anymore, but it's certainly something to think about is if you want to build something larger, starting with a larger bundle of resources mm -hmm. be helpful. recognizing too that you also just entered into a business marriage so you've got you know a, a different set of challenges to go along with it yeah and there is a section um let me see if that's up yet 
on employment agreements. Yeah. So it's your people. Mm -hmm. And there's some very cool um, things that you can use in terms of hiring. This isn't exactly quite on the partner level, which is in the growth section, which still has to launch. But this is focused on how to recruit the right people, um, what salary plan benefits, et cetera. So it's along that growth mindset. But one thing, Patty, I wanted to ask you, and not to put you on the spot, but let's say I'm an Oh, because you would never do that. I would yeah. never do that. I would never do that. <laughs> um, but I'm curious, you know, because you're familiar with so much of the research out there. And when it shows that women who start a business with partners are more successful versus going it alone, what if I'm, what if I'm listening to this and I've already started my business? Is it too late for me? Could I find a partner? Could I partner with another organization? Would that have a similar effect, you think? Sure. I mean, in my mind, it's almost never too late. You just have to decide how you're going to share the company, really, if you're bringing in a partner and what value you've already put in. But there's ways to figure that out. Yeah. So, I mean, that's the cool thing about being the entrepreneur is you get to decide what you want your company to be, you know, and then <laughs> figure out how to get there. Exactly. Yeah. Um, all right. Let's see. So I like the marketing plan. There's a funnel in there. I can show you guys later. And then Patty, you like the angel section. Um, mm -hmm. Is there anything else that you want to draw our attention to that you think is a important? Oh, the, the things that's already up. Um, I think of the things that are already up too. that you and I both love the key performance indicators. Oh like, yeah. You know, and you said something else I think is really important is that these are templates. The whole idea is you make them your own. Yeah. You know, it's not, this is not the fill out this form and this is what it should be. It's here's an example of a form. What we're trying to do is get you to ask the questions you need to ask about your business. You froze a second there, Patty. Um, but while you're frozen, I'm actually going to show the key performance indicators video. So let me just show this real quick, guys. Okay, so this is your business financial strategy. There's a lot of stuff here regarding financials, but what we're talking about is this KPI. And I'll play this video for you. Management expert Peter Drucker once said, what gets measured gets done. You can measure what's happening in your business with key performance indicators or KPIs. While different for every business, all great KPIs have these things in common. They provide objective evidence your business is moving in the right direction. They are predictive, so you can stay a few steps ahead of what's coming. They provide a measurable way to track your progress toward a goal. They refer to a period of time, such as a year, month, week, or day. They are metrics you and your team have all agreed are right for tracking your company's success. For example, let's say Maya wants to start tracking KPIs to measure her company's growth. First, she meets with her team, and they all agree to a measurable goal of $2.4 million in sales for the year. Next, the team looks at how many proposals they sent out in the last two years and calculate a 50% win rate. This allows them to set a $4.8 million goal for new proposals. To make the sales growth numbers more meaningful, Maya and her team add gross margin and company profit. Next, they turn their annual KPIs into monthly and weekly targets. Now Maya creates a meeting schedule and tracking system so her team can review their progress. When things go off course, Maya flags problem areas for one-on-one -on -one follow up. Sometimes Maya saves the last 15 minutes of the weekly meeting for the entire team to troubleshoot flagged KPIs. So what KPIs are you tracking? What should you be tracking? As you look at your goals for business growth, use KPIs to help you stay on track. And just so you guys can see this, this is 
KPIs, your BFF. So in case of you, <laughs> some of you need a BFF, KPIs can be it. And Patty, you froze a little bit when you were talking about um, the, the key performance indicators. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure how, I'm not sure when I froze. <laughs> but, um, you know, it, it, I, as long as you heard the idea that decide what are your key performance indicators and then make sure that you actually follow up on them. I think that's the, the really big part of it. Yes. And we were just discussing this in my, my class the other day about KPIs, and it's really hard to understand conceptually. But when you actually use a business case and you say, oh, all right, this is really important to us. For instance, the example shown in this video probably is some kind of consulting company where it's really important how many proposals they get out and then how many of those proposals they win. Mm -hmm. And that gives them the data to then start sort of chipping away at, can we get the win rate higher? And let's look at the proposal. And then like Patty, you were saying earlier, maybe we would look at a couple competitive proposals mm -hmm. and, and sort of, check maybe even in different industries mm -hmm. and take some best practices and put it back into ours and just see, can we shift that win rate a little bit? And the reason I love that is because it's automatic growth. You're doing the same amount of effort, but you're just more successful with it. Um, the cost to acquire a customer is cheaper and your win rate or conversion rate is better. Mm -hmm. And that's the, the funnel that you guys hear about a lot. And then also it just saves time. Right. So well, it, it can does. be kind of fun stuff. Well, you know, and I think that's where you can make it personal too, because that's hugely different is what are the key metrics for you in your business? You know, and maybe there's a metric about, um, you know, the amount of time you want to spend on personnel issues, you know, versus the amount of time you don't. So how are you going to figure that out? Or even the number of uh, little league games you want to get to a week those types yeah. of things. So again, figuring out the value you want to create in your business and your life, and then you know, really managing that part of it as well. You know, it just makes it simpler, I think. Yes, it, it sort of what number, um, what story does the number tell you? That's good. And, yeah. that, and that idea of simplicity versus mm -hmm. complexity, because I think when you first hear about KPIs, I don't mean you, Patty, but I mean, when, you know, when one yeah. hears about the idea of KPIs, it can sound sort of intimidating, but then mm -hmm. when you think, geez, you know, this could actually make my life more simple mm -hmm. and maybe I'm just going to focus on three key KPIs. That's the biggie is right? we're not talking about sheets and sheets of these. We're talking about the handful that are really meaningful to you. Mm -hmm. You know, and then even having a system, some of these I needed to check daily. Some of these I need to check weekly, monthly, quarterly, you know, whatever it might be. But, um, you know, the whole thing is having a system and working it. Mm -hmm. And then let me show you guys this real quick, which is the having a system and working it. I'm just sort of, that's, that's sort of the key to the universe. <laughs> uh, marketing plan. Let me just show you guys this funnel. So this you can launch and it's actually, it's a PDF. It starts with an interesting quote. There's lots of different sort of mini case studies in here in, these, in the form of these quotes. This is a PDF. So if you don't have Wi-Fi or you have satellite and you're in a rural area, you could you know, download this, go to bed and it's, it's there the next day. Mm -hmm. And one of the things uh, that I like about this is, let's see, is it the actual funnel? This is one of those things like you're saying, Patty, I think it can make life a lot simpler. When you're up here at the top of the funnel, you might be reaching, let's call it a thousand people through influencers. And then people click, then they're thinking about it, they're making the decision. Maybe you help them do that with some video or some information at key decision points, and then they act. And this is the difference between the top here, the blue and the, the deep orange here is the conversion rate. It's mm -hmm. how many people you're bringing into your um, bottom of the funnel activity here. And funnel and that type of stuff, just so you guys know, is one of those key terms that business nerds out there love to talk about. So there's cost of acquisition, there's um, conversion rate. Now pivot is a big thing. And learning some of this vocabulary, I'm sure a lot of you already know it, um, helps us be part of this community that can help us, whether they're our partners, our peers and mentors, or funders. Yeah. 
All right, so Patty, one of the things we, oh, here's a question that's come in, hold on. This person is too embarrassed to ask us in the chat. <laughs> All right, you're gonna like this, Patty. All right. as, an, as I'm an entrepreneur, I've been in business five years. I am too embarrassed to even admit this in the Q&A. <laughs> I am completely confused by financial statements. I dread oh, yeah. fear when our, our accountant comes in to do our books and asks me questions. Is this the dirty little secret of entrepreneurship or am I alone in this? <laughs> oh, so not alone. No, I would say that if not the majority, there, I mean, there's a big group of you. Absolutely. And it's not just women. I think that's, that's the rap we get is that women, you know, aren't as good at math or, you know, silly things like that. And the fact of the matter is there's a lot of business owners that do not understand their financials. And mm -hmm. the trap is that you fall into saying, well, my bookkeeper handles that what do you, how do you know your bookkeeper is any good? You know, you have to be able to know, to evaluate not only what they tell you, but your bookkeeper, your accountant in general, those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. But um, years ago, there was a woman named Anita Bratina in Pittsburgh. At that time, she owned the largest woman-owned company in Pittsburgh. And this is quite a while ago, but she won the use of a high-level advisory board for a year. I think it was through their chamber of commerce. And she wrote... I also, I think it was Inc. Magazine and then a book, but it's old. Um, she wrote about how she didn't even convene that board for so long because she was too embarrassed that they would see what she didn't know. So I think getting over the idea of being embarrassed about what you don't know and being really proud of what you know and you've accomplished. And once you rip the bandaid off and sit down with someone, someone you trust and go, I don't get this. Um, mm -hmm. But before you do that, Go on ascent, work through the financial sections, mm -hmm. you know, and, and you'll just get a lot. You can work through it in the privacy of your own home. And there's a lot of other things online too. But um, yeah, let me show what Patty's talking about. It's extremely common. You are not remotely alone. Yes. I've noticed this a lot with entrepreneurs where some of it is because let's be honest, they've got the, isn't that a saying spit and vinegar or something <laughs> from like the olden times, but they have that. That uh, one's too old even for me, Kathy. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I've been watching, I've been really watching too many old um, series on Netflix about historical things. So. Oh. Oh. I'm, there. I'm right there. So this is what Patty's talking about. You guys is when first there's personal and business finances, which is great it's really helping set you up for success. And here's a financial literacy case study that it specifically involves some stuff that uh, the, the, some SBA tools they're using, but it's still very useful. Then here's financial statements. And we went through this one by one, understanding profit and loss statements, understanding balance sheets mm -hmm. and cash flow, and then ratios, which are similar to KPIs, but it's really, nerding out, if you will, on your financial statements and having those numbers tell you an important story. And so, it can be so much fun. I mean, actually, yeah. okay, maybe that's our sickness too, but you know, <laughs> it, it can be fun to dive in and solve the puzzle of why is this like this? And then projections playing with what you'd like it to be. What if I did this? What if I did that? Uh, it's, you know, you have to be financially literate. You just mm -hmm. do. Yes, agreed. And then Daya is writing in, in the chat and she's saying, yes, this is true. She, she relates to this yeah. and we're hearing um, from, I hope I'm pronouncing this right. Saleha, thanks for this key takeaway. Can we get this and download it so I can share it with my under-resourced entrepreneurs in the SURE program at the University of Houston? Yes. That's one of the things about having a government resource folks. Yeah. It's free. It's yours. You paid for it ascent.sba.gov. There you go. Anywhere. Yeah. yeah. And here's Samira. Love the call out to angel investing, especially for women. If anyone is interested in learning more about the women's angel investing networks, do reach out. There are a number of local angel area networks focused on women own and run businesses. Yep. And this is Samira Bazaz, who uh, is a class mentor and lecturer in women's entrepreneurship with me. And you can find her on LinkedIn and she can give you some of that information. Um, bookkeeping is so important. Um, Parimala Kasu is saying, bookkeeping is so important. We have seen a lot of physicians 
depending on the accountants and they, and it still went underwater. Yeah. Oh, and then Ruth, okay, sorry. I've been missing the chat, guys. I've been looking at the Q&A and missing the chat. The chat's kind of blowing up here. Great point from Ruth, um, the idea of imposter syndrome. Mm. It can hit mm -hmm. even the best. Oh, yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. And yeah. let's talk about that a little bit, this imposter syndrome. And, oh, Kelly Vargo is saying so true. Right, this, this is not about um, airbrushing ourselves. This is about, you know, Patty and I got together behind the scenes and we said, this is what we see. We see this all the time with entrepreneurs. This is going to be helpful, we think. So mm -hmm. just remember, this was designed for you guys. Um, don't ever think, oh, I should or I shouldn't know this. You've been busy. <laughs> we know this. <laughs> if we could take the word should out of entrepreneurship, that would yes. be... How, you know, although I'm just the one that said you have to be financially literate. So, you yeah. know, take it with a grain of salt. But yeah. this is a big psychological hang up that I see starting in my classroom, starting probably even earlier. And we know from a lot of different studies, like the AAUW uh, study on why so few, and then also Carol Dweck, if you guys haven't read mm -hmm. uh, Carol Dweck's book on the growth mindset. Mm -hmm. It shows us that women and girls are just as good at math and some of these quant and STEM areas. It's up here. It's, it's the mentality that actually that's keeping us back, which is trial and error. Mm -hmm. Saying, woo, you know, tried that equation, tried this macro or, or calculation in the spreadsheet, fell flat on my face. Hmm, all right, I wonder how I figure that out. Let's yeah. try again. That's the attitude we need. We have the ability that's been proven so never oh. doubt your ability no go have a coffee come back to the spreadsheet <laughs> so can we talk about the ones that aren't up yet yeah we can do that yeah I'm so all right so what's what do you um what are you excited about that Kathy knows i'm dying to talk about the opportunity and innovation one because i think up yet. Yeah, it's not up yet so ask yeah. ask your sba about it about yeah. when, when it's going to be up um, <laughs> I think it's one of the, the most unique parts about this because in the beginning, I talked about our definition of entrepreneurship, identify opportunities, organize resources, provide the leadership. And most programs have a ton on resources, pretty much on leadership, but a lot of programs too start with, they, the entrepreneur comes in with an opportunity, has an opportunity and that's what they're working on. So right now during pandemic time, we heard a lot about pivot I think we should talk more about pirouetting because mm. to me, if it starts, you go out, it's not working, there's you know, a pandemic, something's going on and you pivot, you make a turn. We approached opportunity recognition uh, as a situational awareness question. And we actually drew from the Air Force and the FFA, FAA on pilot training on how are you constant, how do you train yourself to constantly being looking around for new opportunities to recognize when something's changing that you have to be aware with. And we built that into our opportunity recognition section. And then the next part of that is how do you actually assess that, making sure it's not just a, right. an idea, maybe a good idea, but is it an actual business opportunity? But I, I'm really excited about, about that one coming yes. on because I do think that's one of the most important skills you have to develop is being able to constantly watch those opportunities and see what makes sense for you and your business. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Patty, that it's such a great uh, model that you mentioned there in terms of really borrowing from the best. Mm -hmm. Who has to be situationally aware mm -hmm. because their safety depends on it? Exactly. And borrowing those techniques, borrowing from the best. And we could just sort of do it in our environment on a daily basis, but it's, it's like putting on that pair of glasses, right? And Constantly. just saying, yeah, I'm going to do that. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and I'll admit, I, you know, I had some help at home. My husband's a retired fighter pilot. So I got to pick his brain about how they train on this and those kinds of things. And then use the, the government resources that were out there, but were never used in the context of entrepreneurship or small business. Mm -hmm. So I, I think that's, that's a neat part of it. We also added in more in protection of intellectual property. 
because again, Kathy knows my biases after way too many Diet Cokes together. Um, <laughs> you know, our, our intellectual property system, really our in system of innovation is really missing the boat in the United States because it's focused on such a tiny slice of businesses, whereas all businesses have the chance to develop new ideas, new ways of doing things, new processes, and then figuring out what needs to be protected and how yes. do you do that? Yes. And that's so important, Patty. Also, we have more comments here on chat. People are really agreeing with this idea of financial literacy. Mm -hmm. and, and we've got a, um, Paramala has said, I started my course in accounting in the MBA program, second semester. Good job, congratulations. Way to go. And then Kelly is saying, seeing my dad's ex-business partner, whoa, embezzle, inspired me to go back to the MBA, uh, go back and get my MBA to learn about finance. And it's, we'll hear a lot of stories about that, actually. Mm -hmm. um, some, you know, I, I know somebody who's an attorney who was paying so much to their attorney to do contracts. So she just went and got her JD. It's really fascinating what drives us to get smart about something. But the important yeah. thing is that you are. Um, sounds like a great section. Do you have any idea when it will come out? And love the idea of pirouetting. We don't know yet. I think um, we're going to have to... We're going to have to ask the SBA about that, and I'll try to put it out on uh, social when we find out. Scott was asking about it this week, um, one of our contacts who's running all the tech side of this and building it here, and we've got somebody, I'm 52, by the way, it's never too late. Never. Never no. too late. No. Um, I remember in 10,000 small businesses, I think the oldest person we had in there, and that program's still going, was low 80s, something like that. And really? If you know that program at all, it is not a startup program. It's a growth. So I think it was 84 or something like that. And he was still determined that he was going to actively grow his business. So no, yeah. never too late. Yeah, it's never too late. Um, we invent, I mean, geez, if anybody's going to invent the rules, it's going to be the entrepreneurs. So and also, entrepreneur, yeah. entrepreneurship is, is just playing such an astounding role in our world right now, you know, from Moderna down to getting food to families in need. So just remember that entrepreneurship is, is so big and vast in the different roles we can play. And even if you're listening and you're not an entrepreneur, you probably already kind of are actually. Yeah. Have that entrepreneurial yeah. mindset and are doing things your own way. And that's, I, I think it's just fantastic. Um, all right, so not published yet. My favorite would be negotiation is one yeah. of the tools. And there's a whole module on uh, or a journey on entrepreneurial leadership with different tools for the leader. And negotiation is in there. And I'll tell you a story that relates to some of the points from that tool that I used in class just last week, okay? So one of the first things we learn as women uh, in the book, Women Don't Ask, which is this classic, of women in negotiation is you have to decide at all, like I'm gonna negotiate. It's just having that thought at all, I'm gonna negotiate, I'm gonna make that decision. And once that enters your mind, then you have a jumping off point and it's time to negotiate. And there's some tools we talk about in there, mm -hmm. including one of my favorites, um, the author of Getting More, who is a professor at Wharton, and is a former hostage negotiator and says, yeah, a lot of times women um, that I hear from will say, oh, I feel nervous, I'm gonna ruin the relationship or I'm worried I'll offend them or I, I worry, I'm worried they won't like me. And in class, we really just divide it in two different columns. Here's the business column, here's the friend column. And what we hear in getting more is even when somebody says, I hate you. I mean, could there be somebody disliking you more than saying I hate you? your reaction is, tell me more about that. I'd like to learn more about that. And everything is an opportunity for connection. Yeah. And so we can make that connection and then we can ask for what we want in terms of our value. Mm -hmm. And I talked with a former student last week who just decided I'm gonna negotiate, I'm gonna ask and got a 20% increase in her summer internship offer. And then another student 
who just blew away our class record of deciding you're going to negotiate and then going through the steps, practicing with a friend. Our, our old record was uh, somebody who doubled their salary. Our new record is a student who had to negotiate a specific deal um, for herself and her company, if you will, and, and got a 400% increase. <laughs> For, I, I mean, people were just, their jaws were dropped. And this all comes from just deciding and making the decision, I'm going to negotiate, doing some research, not worrying, does somebody like me or not, and recognizing everything is an opportunity for connection yeah. and having a successful result. Well, you know, Kathy, I, another reason I love that part too is that that's a really great example of how this program's built on research. Because the research does show that women tend to not have as strong outcomes in negotiation as do men, unless, unless. they are, unless they're negotiating on behalf of someone else. And then they so, blow everybody out of the water. Exactly. So yes. if you know that research, then you can condition yourself to say, I'm not negotiating this contract for me. I'm negotiating it for my employees you know, who, if I get this, I can give them that 5% raise or, or whatever it might be. So the research, you know, point. you know, knowing the skill can be there and that the research shows that you can have even better outcomes and therefore this is the pathway to take in that. I, I think that's another advantage of Ascent being built on what have we learned to date. Yes, and I'm in, Dr. I'm in, Terbishi is asking, how many of you really negotiate be honest now, he's asking in the chat. And um, Kelly's saying, this reminds me of the piece of advice Tim Ferriss gives in the four hour work week. If you want something, pick up the phone and call the CEO and just ask. <laughs> Similarly, the only way we can get what we want is, is, is if we ask. Mm -hmm. And a lot of, yeah, it's just working through those taboos and our own mental hangups and recognizing they're exactly that. But if we tap into our strengths and our ability to get to know people, to connect, mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. see the value in the bigger pie that we could be creating by connecting, by asking smart questions, by the research, then everybody walks away happy. And exactly. we can't wait to get back to the table the next time. They like I do love win-wins, yeah. Win, yeah, exactly. So um, this is fantastic. What's the worst that can happen, Iman says. They say no, right, yeah. it's true. Um, so Patty, we've got two minutes left. Any um, wish list? Any wish list modules that we could develop? And I think what we're giving people is a little, a little to do, go out and research this area. Yeah, uh, a wish Mention list the of policy. Yeah, I, I would like to do policy. I, I think that learning how to get politically active on behalf of entrepreneurship, um, you know, the narrative that's held by a lot of politicians just isn't accurate of what they think small businesses are and who they think they are and how they think of it separate as entrepreneurship. So I would love to do something more in policy. But when it comes to Ascent, my wish is that the rest of the mods get posted. Yes, so that's, that's know, the wish. Okay. That's my wish. My, my wish uh, module or exercise, and this can be an easy search for people who are listening, is on male allyship. Oh, so great. male allyship is a pretty cool area I've been learning a lot about um, from two professors at different military academies in the US. And so we have uh, David Smith and then uh, it's Brad Johnson and they wrote a book called Good Guys. And if you can listen to them speak, uh, that to me would be a great webinar or add on that we could have to Ascent that I'd love to see SBA do. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's really this idea of how and why, and this is what we need to be doing in terms of supporting female cal colleagues. It's a win-win and they dispel the myth and other research dispels the myth that if you support women, they're taking an opportunity from you. No, in fact, research shows that when you support women at all those different levels that I discussed in the beginning, there's actually yeah. more opportunities for everybody. It is not a zero sum game. No, no, it is not. Never heard of this, this is a gem. Yeah, this, just wait guys, when you start looking into some of this stuff, and looking into the policy areas that Patty is talking about, this is this is the next wave. Maybe you think, hmm, I'm going to approach an angel investor. I'm going to try to find uh, Samira online or look into Patty's group. Maybe you're thinking, wow, I'm going to look into Plen 
maybe you want to do marketing uh, KPIs or conversion funnel or cost to acquire. Any, any one takeaway from this to me would be fantastic. So thank you all for being here, Patty. Thanks for just leading the way on this amazing resource. It was just the honor of my life working with you. It was fantastic. I feel the same about you, Kathy. I, I'm so thrilled to see it up. I just want to see it growing. And I think it'll grow by people just making the community, you know, just really mm -hmm. making a community around this. Yeah. Well, thanks everybody for being here. Thanks to the ICSB and GWSB team for your constant focus on entrepreneurship, women, and diversity. And stay tuned for the next session, which is going to take place with Amy and Lex in 15 minutes on pitching and what special sauce women may need to bring to the table. Thanks, everybody. <laughs>